Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about, uh, nominally we're going to talk about Ember data. Uh, we're not going to talk about Ember data in the kind of the broad stroke uh, sense. What I want to talk about is uh, a kind of problem that I ran into, uh, how I went about solving it, um, and hopefully it's something that uh, you can either uh, benefit from or contribute to. Um, I, uh, my, my Twitter handle is Yankee in London. Um, I'm kind of relatively new to the Twitter scene. My, my old ex-fiance's roommate um, created Twitter. Um, I was actually supposed to be involved in reviewing a project back in San Francisco in the early days uh, that was a precursor to Twitter. But I'm now getting, I'm getting it. I think Twitter is a, a good thing and I, I, I'm, I'm signed up. So if you want to get a hold of me, that's probably the best way these days. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of backdrop on uh, what I've been doing. So, so as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I'm not a, an Ember expert, um, but I have now, uh, this is my second application that I've, I've built with Ember. The first one was a front-end interface. It was more of an experiment, a little bit of a play to see how Ember might work. Um, and in a sense, this is a little bit uh, similar. I, I've got a uh, architecture where the primary focus for the client side has been iOS, uh, and it's iOS communicating through a RESTful API to a, um, a couch-based backend. And um, so we're early days, so the uh, administration of some of the couch-based documents was easy enough to use the tools that come with couch-based, going in there and mucking around with some of the JSON. But at some point, the idea, idea occurred to me that an ad administrative interface might be a good way to start to become more familiar with uh, Ember, start to really understand whether Ember data is the right solution for what I'm trying to do. And um, it, it became more necessitated by the fact that uh, in Couchbase, I was starting to do more advanced things with uh, lookups that, you know, some of the business logic that was tied into the back end. Uh, it was no longer really that convenient just to go in and play with the data directly. So, uh, so having the same business logic that the iOS app or any client would have uh, when data is being manipulated be available to the administrative application was, was attractive. Um, so I did that, and you know, the first thing I did was, you know, I think anyone who's used done an Ember, Ember application, it's really simple to go through and iter iterate through a set of arrays, right? So you get a model in your array controller, and you can just go through, and it's very easy to, you know, for this, in this case, if I want to manage, say, reference data in, a, uh, in an application, um, I, um, in fact, I'll, I'll flip back and forth a little bit here. I'll show you, just so you can, can, can see it a little bit more, the interface. So I'm not going to go through all of this. But in this application, the idea of an action is something that a person can do. And as I said, it's just a standard REST-based API. So you can make your GET request with no ID and get back a list of the different actions that are available. You can ask for a specific one. Um, you, can do, uh, you can add one using posts put is a, an update, so on and so forth. You know, it's all fairly, uh, fairly basic. Uh, what I'd like to be able to do, though, is have the administrative interface go in and use this, uh, this API and start to manipulate the, the Couchbase uh, records behind that. So um, let's go back in. To, no. So getting a, a table of actions uh, is easy. Use an array controller, go through the model, I can see all the the data that's there, but if I want to go into an actual record, my assumption was is that it would also be easy to iterate through the properties. And actually, that isn't kind of automatic. Um, there, is, uh, there are some libraries out there, uh, a library uh, called Swag that uh, helps you go through, iterate through object properties, and it's not hard to create uh, helpers that allow you to, or, or components that would allow you to go through um, different objects. But in terms of getting out the properties that you'd want for a, a record in, in Ember data, you have to put it together yourself. And really what I was looking for is really actually quite simple. It was just, I want to know what is the name of the property. I want to know what is its value and I want to have a bound uh, connection to it. And I'd like to know what type of information that is. I mean, type in the most basic sense. And so if it's defined in the model as being a string, I want to know it's a string or a number or a date or whatever it's defined as. Um, potentially, there's also some additional meta information I might want to add on to that as well. And if we have time, I can show you that there's also ways of extending this beyond that. But this, these three attributes are the key thing that I want to build my administrative interface on. The idea would be is that 
I can have a model neutral approach. I can just throw it in the name of a model and it will go through and display all the attributes, use the appropriate widgets so that if it's an array, it'll give me some sort of a control that works the arrays. If it's a Boolean, so it'll give me a you know, on off switch or wh whatever is appropriate for the type of data that's there. So this is really, I think, another way of saying it. it's pretty small. So, but you know, what I want to be able to do is have someone build a model and then have this, the screen built automatically so that the administrative interface just kind of grows with the model as it's, as it's being developed. Um, so I, I went into first, you know, that, you, know you go into the Ember.js website, there is the guide section, uh, and you can get a certain distance with that and pretty quickly there was clear that the questions I was asking weren't getting answered there so I went to the API section which is the next uh, point of reference and in the API section there are quite a few things that are available so there's a number of uh, static methods and, um, and, and data types related to uh, the model object and in their own ways they all sort of answer around this question I mean in, in terms of those three attributes I talked about the value, none of these talk about the value. They're all talking about trying to address the type. Is this a relationship? Is it an attribute? Is it, if it's an attribute, what type of attribute is it? If it's a relationship, what type of relationship is it? But I just found it, you know, in, in many ways, it kind of structurally not, not very well suited for what I wanted. But I, the way I would uh, like to view it is just there's a list of things in my model because um, you know, even the relationships for, to start out with, I, I'm kind of, my model, I uh, have, um, let's say a, a, um, an action is related to, uh, well, this doesn't make any sense, but let's say a unit, a unit of measure. So, um, so let's say there is a one-to-many relationship. But to start out with, I'm just going to put that as a string field. I think most people, when they model these things, they just put in strings, and then that allows you to, uh, or, or an array, and that allows you to kind of have ultimate flexibility. Then you can start to tune it to a has-many relationship or a, a, a owned-by relationship later on. Um, so when I looked at the outputs of this, it structurally was a little bit weird in that it would list one of these, let's see, uh, attributes would only list attributes, relationships would only list relationships, which I guess makes sense. Uh, there's one of them here, I guess it's not here, there's, a, there's another one that says list all fields, but then when we started getting fields, that comes close to what I want, it's now the full list of things that are a part of that model. Um, but the uh, problem with that is that the, um, the, the type then becomes auto. I mean, for the type on a um, attribute, it just, the type is just attribute instead of saying string. So you lose that resolution there. You have to go, you call one API to get that. You say, oh, it's an attribute, and then I have to call another one to find out what type it is. Again, it's all, you know, it's not, it's not terrible. It's just not exactly out of the box. It's not certainly available to the templating engine in the way I wanted it to be. Um, and then in terms of value binding and promises, you know, this is something that um, I'm, is starting to make a lot of sense to me, but it's also something that I'm, uh, I'm not perfect at yet. So um, my uh, realization was is that um, trying to bind to an actual record uh, was creating difficulties because the, um, the model itself, if it wasn't uh, held in memory, the reference to the record itself would go away. So I, what I had to do is I actually had to bind to the, I'll show, I'll show you an example of it because it's easier for me just to show you than talk through it. But um, so in the case of kind of iterating, I don't know if this is readable. So if I have a binding, which really what I'm interested in is uh, the type, or the, sorry, the, the value, um, I can't simply uh, bind to um, that, that attribute and pass along this, this object. I, I have to instead include the actual record um, and then make a relative binding from that record over to the field, if that makes sense. Um, in any case, that's, you know, doing that, um, and, and I, you know, I've, I went through uh, the, now I've went through the guides, the API, and the discussion list, and finally come up with this solution. It, do, it does work, um, so I get a bound reference to the values. Um, and in summary, you know, I was able to create a, a mixin that gets my simple answer. It gets me to give me the type, 
give me a binding to the value uh, and give me uh, a reference to the name. Um, and based on time, what I was thinking is um, I can show you, I can just go through the exercise of building from a kind of completely blank project um, the, uh, a, a controller ca calling the API, getting the list of items, and then showing you uh, the model neutral way of going through this. Uh, and I hope that'll work. Um, uh, or I can just show you the endpoint where kind of the conclusion, I'll probably show you that anyways at the end. Um, I think we're, we're going through pretty quickly. What, what time are we trying to end at? Uh, We've got so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try going through the actual um, coding exercise then. So um, the starting point is at zero. So we're really starting here with a project which I'll keep the debugger over in the right hand side so we can look at that as throughout the exercise. I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can read. Um, and all we have is a single template uh, which says check out this cool sexy admin functionality. And if I click on that it will go to the admin route which has nothing. So pretty much starting at, at zero. Um, Let's look at that in code. So in code, we have what you'd expect. Uh, there is a reference to the REST model. Um, I won't go into that, but it's um, you know, pretty basic stuff, just connecting it up to the API uh, that I showed you earlier. Um, and well, here, let's just look at it quickly. So it's as simple as specifying that there is a prefix on the API, and then there's a, an array uh, element that I'm doing a serial serialization for. But other than that, it's just plain vanilla, uh, using the, the REST adapter as it comes out of the box. Uh, so that's our starting point. So there's a semblance of being able to talk to this API. There is a, um, a route called administration, and there is an, an administration item route. And the idea is that the admin route, on the admin route, what we're going to want to do is set up a, um, just a, a text field uh, where we can type in a model, and then it'll use that model to go and pull out down all the records for us so we can choose a record and then it'll tell us all the properties in that, that table. So that's what we want to do. Um, and uh, I, I've sheeted a little bit so to make this a little bit faster. And I've created some models for us. So if I save that, go back to the blank admin page again. And if I go to the data side here, now you'll see that those three models do exist as definitions. There's nothing in there. But we have something called an action, which we talked about earlier. Oops. We have units of measures and unit of measure systems, which we may not get to. But it, if we want to talk about how relationships versus attributes are set up, we can use that as an example of that. OK, so, so models are set up in, our, in our, our definition now, but no interactivity. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in, um, actually, I forgot my cheat sheet. Uh, just right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So we um, we're going to create a controller and a, a template, which is just for the index. Again, this is for the array controller, it's going to just show us the list of different um, IDs within uh, whatever model we specify. So I'm going to save that. When we come up back over here, now the template's been updated. So it allows us to put in the model name. Um, and if we go back and look at data, our options are action, unit measure, unit measure system. I'm going to choose action, at which point it's going to say, yep, that's a valid uh, table, that's my model. And it'll give me a list of different IDs that are available. And I can choose whatever I want. So let's just choose eight lunch. Um, now, by clicking on that, you'll see that we've, we've navigated to the next route. So the next route is an item. And the goal here now is to introspect. And of course, this is the magic. This is the part that I was stumbling with is, is how do I go through dynamically and figure out what are the properties, what are the types of those properties. And hopefully, this is the part that works. Now, I, I was coding as I came over here because uh, I didn't give myself enough time for this talk, but um, but okay. So let's see now. So oh, actually, one thing to note too is that you notice here that in loading the actions prior, we have loaded up all 100 or 116 
action records, so they're all in here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is um, now bring in the item controller. And let's take a look at what this is actually doing. Um, so I think at first it's not going to work, but um, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to map back to the uh, index controller. So it's, it's going to say what is the model that you're using and what is the ID that you have, and then it's going to ask for a promise or for for that record in the form of a promise and put it into the content field. Okay, so that's. That's the goal of uh, this item controller. And then in terms of the um, template, really simple. It's just, we'll come to the second, the uh, model super meta uh, is, is, um, is going to be effectively the iterator that will go through each one of the properties. Um, and again, we're going to ask for the name. We'll use a text field for the value and what type of field it is. Should I think I like that order better. Okay, so um, so this is the, the original problem I was trying to solve. Um, and if I go back to the web browser, I don't think it's going to be solved right now. Um, I'm going to, should have already reloaded, but I'll just reload it for the sake of arguments. And in fact, yes, I have some sort of an error. And why is that? And the reason is because we don't have the mix-in, I think. Yeah, so right up here, you can see that it was expecting some sort of mix-in. That was the mix-in that I mentioned earlier that um, kind of solves this problem. So let's go back and add it in. Um, this doesn't really matter where I put it. So just put it here. Okay. So now with this mix-in uh, being associated with the product, I also have to go into the item controller. Oh, actually, in that case, it, sorry, it's already referenced here. It just wasn't included in the project. So, so it should work now. Uh, I, this is what I was afraid of. So, so um, the items uh, comes up. The template is loaded. And if we look at the controller, we can see that the mixins properties are all here. Um, this is what I was scrambling with in the, in the last five minutes. I realized that this, in the new environment that I've set up, does not seem to work. Um, the idea here, and I'll show you it working in a second because it does, it does work. There's something a little bit squiggly going on, um, is that the model fields will give us the straight list values of all the attributes and relationships. And then SuperMeta just brings that in along with the, the bounded values as well to give us the, the simple object that the template can, can iterate through. So, um, so ultimately, this is an example of um, what the end product looks like. So here is a list of table, a table, this is an action, the actions table that we were looking at before. We can choose an item, all of the properties for that thing come in. It identifies the type of information and by, based on the type, if it's a Boolean, for instance, it will put in some sort of a, a flag for a, a, a Boolean uh, user interface. If it's a, like synonyms is an array, so it can come up with, um, you know, a multi-selector of whatever I like. Um, and I can go back to the list and see that I didn't save it. So it, it's noticing that the record is, is dirty. So it allows me to come back here and just save it there. Uh, likewise, I can delete records. But it just makes, allows now for a, a simple way of me just pointing at any new model that comes into the system and uh, having a quick way of viewing the attributes, clicking into them, and then checking out the, the, the various properties. Um, so that's, that's it. Um, I, the, well, actually, I guess one thing we didn't, let's see if I can give you an example of it now. I think I've simplified the model right now. One of the things I've, I started to uh, do, I mean, I think most people, when they start using Ember data, they, they use, as I said, the strings for um, a lot of the relationships. So for instance, if I, have, if I take a, um, a model which has uh, a relationship, uh, units of measure, uh, units of measure, so. Uh, 
Then what problems? Okay, I'll have to explain it. So, the uh, you know when I put in um, a a unit a measure has a um, uh, a system of units of measure. So, for instance, a a uh, kilometer is part of the metric system. So it has a relationship to metric. And right now, I just have it listed as a string. So therefore, I can say it's a it's part of the string metrics, or I can say a string comma. Uh, imperial, if I think it's, it should be associated with the imperial system as well. Um, and, and that model works. It doesn't really take full advantage of what you're getting out of Ember data. So, uh, so obviously, you want to start to uh, use the, the built-in uh, relationship functionality that Ember data brings. Um, and and this, um, this simple module, that, this mixing that I've talked about, will we'll certainly expose that information. So it's not a problem. You can, you can visually see what are the relationships, what kind of relationships are they. Uh, but my, my first experience with them was that this is for what I'm trying to do, which is kind of just a functional goal of being able to administrate this data uh, easily. It was more hassle than it was worth to start out with. So I just, you know, it works. It does what I need it to do, as it is. Um, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I probably will try to find some time to start getting the Ember data working the way it should be working in its more complete, way, in its more complete fashion. Um, but I'll, I'll stop there. Um, what questions do people have? Yeah, that's a good point. No, I haven't. I mean, so I haven't looked into the code, if that's what you mean. No. I mean, because, I mean, effect, effectively, uh, what I would say is that the, the problem that was solved here is not a hugely complex problem. It's, it's just, in fact, it's, it's quite, a, it's a relatively simple problem. Uh, but it's, um, it's so simple that I would actually expect it could be more out of the box. You know, I would think that in the same way that with an array controller, we can simply iterate through that. I would think that would just come out of the box, and maybe it will at some point in the future. Um, it was sort of a fun way to try to get underneath the covers, and maybe looking at the source would have been a good way of, of uh, you know, figuring that out. Look, other questions? Jamie? Can you tell us a little bit more about Life Gadget? Uh, I can. I think it's probably more of a beer conversation. The, the short version is it's uh, sort of an, an inter intersection of the um, healthcare and wellness space that's taking place. Um, uh, for, for those of you, I think probably a lot of you who are um, reading the, the tech tabloids these days about um, Apple's new iWatch or whatever it will be called, um, you know, they're, um, they're making even more popular a space that, that two years ago pretty much didn't exist. Uh, my focus is within that kind of realm and it's, it's, it's more focused on connecting the individual to a set of um, professional services like personal trainers, dietitians. Uh, physiotherapists and allowing for them to interact in a more effective way. There's there's a very uh, strong um, evidence to suggest that people who want to create behavior change do it much more effectively with those uh, sorts of actors involved. And I think they're all very keen on working on a data level with people, but they just don't have the tools to do it right now. Okay. Well, we may be done. It may be beer time. Um, okay. Well, let's, let's break. Thank you.